Well, it's the nasty roommate that can make you sick, often lurking in the walls, floors and ceilings. So if you find mould in your rental, you'd expect the landlord to fix it. These tenants claim they got kicked out. Mould, the black stuff, the green stuff, the furry stuff, all potentially toxic. But who's responsible is where this stuff gets a little grey. And that's all mould? That's all mould. Suze and her partner recently started unpacking into a rental in Sydney's Inner West, only to find some toxic housemates had already moved in. These are all mould spores. And this is all rotting wood that's wet to the touch and crumbling. When we arrived, we opened the door and the house just smelt like wet, damp, rotting wood, which it didn't when we inspected it. In the kitchen cupboards, under the floor. It's so bad. We pulled up a few of the floorboards that were loosely sitting on top and there was thick white moulds under all of them. Under the kitchen cabinets was black mould. After just one night, they called their real estate agent for help. We both woke up feeling unwell um, and she offered no solution except run the air conditioning 24-7 on hot to dry it out. Then she immediately terminated the lease on the spot so we had nowhere to go. The real estate agent disputes this, saying the tenants wanted to leave and the agent allowed them with rent and bond refunded. The tenants of this apartment in Sydney's East didn't want to appear on camera, but they let us in with mould specialist Alex Ross to see their nightmare firsthand. The carpet's been removed. You can actually see how wet the concrete slab is. They're like grass roots or tree roots or something that's growing, growing on the slab. Yeah. under the carpet. Yeah. The same day the young couple and their baby moved in here, they noticed the carpet in the main bedroom was wet. Within days, mould started appearing on walls and within weeks, mould started growing on their bed, even on their baby's toys. Well, we tested, we in fact tested the air quality in this room and it's uh, over 10 times the the safe level of what mould should be. So it's at 10,000 parts per million. So we should get out of here. Yeah, let's do that. The young couple eventually had their lease terminated and their rent reimbursed, but they had to find somewhere else to live. And they claim they're around $13,000 out of pocket, forced to turf their mouldy furniture. Alex Ross is a mould specialist from Nanotize. He says we need tougher regulations or Sydney's mould menace isn't going anywhere. Because I'm in business definitely to make money, but we're flat out, we can't really do any more in any case. Really, the crux of why I'm here is because we're, I'm seeing a massive disconnect between what has to happen with mould and what is happening with mould. He says there's a lack of building protocol for developers and little understanding between real estate agents, tenants and landlords on what's causing the mould, who's responsible and how to get rid of it. So we look behind these drawers to start with and you can start to see inside where it starts to get a little bit nastier. Alex and his team are giving this Sydney home the full treatment. It's growing in the bedrooms. This place was cleaned by a professional mould cleaning company three weeks ago. Wow. In the kitchen. We're looking for more epicentres here. Yeah. And if you just look underneath, uh, see down in there, <gasps> in that back corner there. Oh, no. Once it's this bad, getting rid of it is expensive. You've got some work to do here. Yeah, we do. Bedroom wardrobes removed, carpets pulled up, the entire kitchen gutted. And this is what they found. Walls creeping with stubborn and toxic fungus. People will say to use vinegar or clove oil yeah, or yeah, yeah. hopes and dreams, right? What we're knowing, what we're starting to learn about mould is you can't clean it, you've got to get rid of it. 